Hello and welcome to Festool TV. My name is Frank. Today's episode is about the Precisio CF50 trimming saw. I've brought with me two applications. Nothing special, but these applications really show what the machine can do. First, I have a prefabricated parquet panel with standard dimensions of 200 mm. Naturally, it's also available as a laminate. Secondly, I have solid breech wood that I want to split. I'll start with the prefabricated parquet panel. There's a very easy method for cutting it to length. I can make rib cuts and cross cuts with the saw. I have the preset profile setting rail for this. I'll fit this laterally to the V-groove using the retainers. We'll make a cross cut straight away. This is not exactly 90 degrees. I'll just modify it. Using this screw, I can turn the whole preset profile setting rail to 90 degrees. I can adjust it very easily. It is now set at 90 degrees. I can now cut my panel to length very easily. I have a handle on the side. On the handle, I can regulate the switch on, switch off and speed for different materials. At the same time, I can activate a quick emergency stop. I can lock the saw unit in the front position for rip cuts. Now we have come back to our cross cuts. I can cut my panel to length very easily. The problem you've seen is that the support is very small. There is an extension table for this. It's attached to the machine. I'll position the preset profile setting rail further back. The extension table is placed on the side and locked with the side adjusting screws. And very quickly, I have a simple extension table. It's suitable for laminate or parquet panels, but not for very heavy material. I have a problem with the next application. I want to cut not at 90, but 45 degrees. The parquet is being laid not parallel to the wall, but from a corner. This means I must make a 45 degree cut. I can set that very easily on the saw using the preset profile setting rail. Release the rotary knob. I can lock the fence to 45 degrees. I've just fixed the position. I'll align it with my panel by moving slightly forward and locking it. Now I can cut the panel to length. Let's try it out. I'll switch on the power. We're ready to go. We've immediately made a wonderful cut. No need to continue. 304 mm is sufficient to cut this kind of panel board to 45 degrees. It's always a bit hard to hold profiles like aluminium. 
Profil etc., dann ist es natürlich immer ein bisschen schwierig, hier das Material zu halten. Und für diese Fälle haben wir die I can use a clamp here. So, eine hier einzusetzen, um dann so I can clamp materials really well and increase safety. Hier zu spannen und das Ganze dann noch sicherer zu machen. Now we come to the next application. I want to cut through a solid breechwood board with this small saw at a cutting height of 50 mm. So first I'll remove the guide extension. As you already know, you must fit the right saw blade for rip cuts of this kind. Let's look at the saw blade. I'll push it forwards. We have lots of teeth on this saw blade. But for rip cuts with solid wood, I need fewer teeth to get rid of chips. So I'll change the saw blade. Changing the blade is very easy on this saw. Here at the front is a green rotary handle. Release it. The lid automatically lifts. Remove it. There's a green screw here. If I loosen it, the power supply is automatically interrupted and the spindle lock is locked. But better safe than sorry. So we pull the plug so that nothing can happen to us. I'll put the saw in a slightly inclined position, about 15 degrees. Now the green clamping device comes to the front. I'll turn the lever forwards. Now I'll unscrew the screw in the running direction. Carpenters have a saying for remembering how to unscrew a screw. The way I run, the screw's undone. The screw always unfastens in the direction the tool turns. I don't need a tool here. I have a flange with a small lever. The saw also has a form fit connection. Take care with this work. Generally, you should wear gloves for this. I'm being very careful to avoid injuring myself. The question is where the saw blade goes. Should I put it in a box or on a base somewhere? We have a great solution. This holder. It's an accessory that's used on this saw. We can store up to four blades in the holder. This means they're always with my saw. They're just clipped under my saw without the need for any tools. There's also a splinter guard and pencil. I'll show you in another episode how the splinter guard works. But now we come back to the saw blade for rip cuts. I'll just remove it. When putting several blades in the holder, put some cardboard between them. I'll place the saw blade in the saw. It's very easy to put it in position thanks to the form fit connection. I'll put away the other saw blade immediately. So everything's in place. Even with collapsed feet, the saw blade holder isn't in the way. I'll put the flange on. Then close it again. So. I'll put the lid on the machine and turn the screw. Now I'll put the machine in a 90 degree position. 
I can adjust the angle on this machine from minus 2 to plus 47 degrees. That's a very large work range for our applications. Here we have the wood. I can set the height by pushing up slightly. I want to cut off about a centimeter. I'll push the preset profile setting rail back slightly. Here too, we go back slightly. So everything can move freely and nothing is jammed. Below 12 centimeters, the Employers' Liability Insurance Association's instructions say that you should work with a push stick. I choose to use a push stick even at larger distances. After all, I only have two hands, which I want to keep. So I take the push stick. I'll put on my protective glasses and ear protection. Let's see how the machine performs. As you've seen and heard, the saw blade goes through the material as smooth as butter. When sawing using machines of this kind, do not stand directly in front of or behind the machine. This is a danger zone. You should always stand beside the machine. We've tried to demonstrate this as clearly as possible for you on camera. So I was sometimes in this area and always went slightly to the side. I hope you enjoyed seeing the small, compact CS50 saw. I hope you have great fun working with the machine. I hope you'll tune in again soon. I'm Frank. Thanks for watching. See you next time.